This swamp has many dark secrets. A hundred year flood brought storm waters up 40 feet higher than usual. It ripped houseboats loose from their anchors, sending them down the swamp to eventually sink into the dark murky waters. A few made landfall, but most were destroyed beyond repair. But that's not all the storm waters uncovered. It revealed the locations of unmarked graves and old caskets floated up from an old slave plantation. Hurricanes affect not only the living, but the dead too. High above Barataria, Louisiana, on private property, surrounded by flood water and just beyond a pile of trash, was a coffin that had floated away during Hurricane Ida, Esther Morton. I googled the name, found the obituary, and reached one of her daughters, who told us that Mrs. Morton, who was a custodian at the local high school for more than 30 years, had been buried here eight years ago. Oh my Lord. It's been a while, since 2013. That was the last time Troy Harvey saw his grandmother's casket, when he helped to carry it at her funeral. I don't know how we're supposed to get the casket back into its place, but I'm sure they're not comfortable having it sitting on their front lawn either. It is estimated that between 30 and 50 caskets were displaced due to Hurricane Ida's storm surge. But let's turn our attention back to the situation in KwaZulu Natal, where those devastating floods there have affected some cemeteries in the northern parts of the province so badly that graves have been excavated, and in some instances, the skeletal remains of those who've been buried have been brought to the surface. We have seen images of skulls and bones in some instances where we are told cemeteries have been hit heavy by these floods.
回目のほうがでかいの店のボトルやばいかもね Alex Preche is also in Mariposa County, California, with an incident command center there following these wildfires. Alex, that fire now at 10% containment, right? And it's burned more than 16,000 acres. So, what's happening exactly where you are? All of those trees, all of that dry brush surround this region. That is fuel for this fire. We'll turn to our wildfire coverage now. Washington State Patrol is now on the ground helping to fight the Canyon Road Fire. The fire is burning just south of Grandview, and that's in Yakima County, about 2,000 acres in size. The more fire in Douglas County, which is just northeast of Wenatchee. The fire grew to nearly 6,200 acres in size. Then you have the Cow Canyon Fire burning just north of Natchez. So far, nearly 6,000 acres have been burned. And finally, the biggest fire in our area is the Vantage Highway Fire. The fire started in the first of the month and grew to 30,000 acres in size. Adriana, Europe is being hit by a double whammy. First, extreme drought is ravaging the continent. And second, heat wave after heat wave is drying it into a tinderbox. A sea of flames washes across a national park in central Portugal. More than 1,500 firefighters battle this blaze, throwing everything they've got at it, but it continues to rage. In France, the fire season has also been relentless, displacing thousands of people. Our firefighters are tired uh, after one month of fighting. Overwhelmed, the country put out a call for help. Firefighters around Europe answered. Alaska is the largest U.S. state. It is also the least densely populated among its great treasures, the untouched wilderness. But much of that is now being destroyed. Wildfires are not a new phenomenon here, but they are changing. They are becoming more frequent and more intense. So much so that this year, local firefighters here in Anderson were unable to get them under control. to some dire environmental news today. NOAA released a report finding that U.S. coastlines will experience a profound sea level rise. Scientists now predict that sea levels surrounding the U.S. will rise an additional 10 to 12 inches. 
The Arctic is warming three times faster than the rest of the planet. 40% of the U.S. population lives within 60 miles of the coast. 40% of the world lives on coastlines. So here's what we're looking at. An increase in sea level. It's not just the melting of the ice caps in Greenland or in Antarctica. It's the warming of the waters, and that's called thermal expansion. It creates a higher sea level. So the report, here it is. We are warming up, uh, we'll warm up, or should say a sea level rise in 30 years, just as we saw in the last 100. An incredible rate. And again, coastal areas, 10 to 12 inches. That's if we stay where we are in a planet rising. Notice, we're at 1.2 degrees Celsius. We're trying not to get to two. At 1.5 degrees warm up, we're up a foot and a half. But if we continue to do nothing, the report says at three degrees Celsius warm up, we're at 21 feet on the coastlines. Ang lamon ng dagat. Malaki na nakain ng dagat. Oo, oh, bahay ito. Hanggang dito yan, bahay yan. Yung simbahan nga dyan, natangay na rin yun eh. Wala na rin. Manila is now living on borrowed time. Some 300,000 people living in Pekalongan, Central Java, face seeing their coastal city submerged by ocean waves. The village of Semonet in the northern city of Pekalongan is slowly sinking. More than 40 families have already moved away, but dozens others are holding on. Now they've begun to submerge villages. The White House and the US military didn't think this was the right time. It was a bad idea for her to travel to Taiwan right now, given escalating tensions between China and the US and that warning from President Xi himself about her playing with fire. But make no mistake, this will definitely up the ante uh, between the two nations. And from there we go to the Middle East, where for a third straight day, Israeli forces and Islamic militants are trading fire in the Gaza Strip as the death toll is climbing. Russians are leaving Crimea in droves. Take a look at this. Major traffic jams, cars lining up on the highway, and these videos have been posted by Russians themselves. This is what Russia's Saki Air Base looked like before the blast. And this is what it looks like now. The entire base has been flattened. They say Ukraine's special forces were involved in this operation because Russia is not taking any of this line low. It has upped the ante, and this time with a nuclear threat. A new threat from Russia to the U.S. this morning over what it calls the possible seizure of Russian assets in Ukraine. Warning from Taiwan's foreign minister now. China is using its unprecedented military drills to prepare for a full-scale invasion of the self-governing island. So it's it's falling apart badly and the ships that are stuck in port and trying to get into port unlike anything the world has ever seen this is much worse than it was with covid remember when we couldn't get anything now it's causing all kinds of problems and we are just at the beginning of this story um, this is an epic black swan event uh, and with the war in ukraine and the bird flu pandemic i don't know if anybody's been paying attention to that but that's causing real problems here in the united states uh, and this is this is assuming now that in the next 12 months there are no natural disasters. We are now facing the worst global food crisis since World War II. I want you to think about this. The worst food crisis since World War II. This is a problem. Senator um, uh, Roger Marshall said that we are going into a worldwide famine and quote it is definitely going to happen there's no one to turn to for help heart attacks are increasing among young people an alarming health trend heart attacks are becoming more common among younger people This woman murdered three innocent children and her son and took every bit of joy I had in my life away from me. She killed 
to my kids. Yeah, yeah, I gotta talk to the funeral people. My son will not be buried with her. My buddy! My choice! My buddy! My choice! Now that was the New York State Attorney General leading pro-choice protesters in Manhattan, just one of the marches and rallies in cities right across the United States. A leaked draft opinion showing that the conservative majority on the U.S. Supreme Court has voted to overturn Roe v. Wade, the half-century-old case that set the precedent for abortion rights in the U.S. Tonight, you'll see those same twin sisters admit to brutally killing their mother. It wasn't like it was a fight on the street. It was more of a fight to somebody die. She just started waving the pot around, things like that or whatever it is. So I guess she trying to hit us with the pot. You know, she just threatening us and everything. Your mom's yelling? We all yelling. Everybody's yelling. We all is mad. I had to pop from her. This one she had grabbed and like, kind of turned like he said, get back. But she didn't keep the knife in her hand. My mom was just, just went in that, that battle with the knife or whatever. So I, I picked up the pot and I hit him with the pot. She bit me in the chest. Like I said, I'm not that big. So she's, when she bit me, she latched onto me. I'm trying to get her off of me because it hurts. I'm trying to punch her, I guess. And um, I think Dad stayed up there. She stayed up there. I was stunned. I think I picked up a knife and I stayed up there. They wasn't cuts like they were deep because I. I couldn't bring myself to do that. After all the biting, punching, screaming, and stabbing, the twins dragged their mother into the bathtub. Neither really explain why. She went under a couple times and that was it. Today's drive home from the ride was pretty eventful. 